you know because the Bible says, I know all things. There's not any heat farther from you. I want to thank you, Jehovah, for your faithfulness, O Lord, of our lives. I want to thank you for your goodness, O God. And most importantly, Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you for the life of our brother, James and Jolie. For, oh, oh Lord, you, have, you gave him to us even as a blessing. Thank you, Lord, even as we gather here tonight. And your name alone will be glorified. We ask, oh God, how that will do tonight. Jesus will take preeminence. We ask, him how that will do tonight. That the name of the Lord will be exalted. Holy Spirit of the Most High, we hand over to you tonight, even as we go. We ask that, Lord, in this place, oh Lord, only your will will be done. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated.
17 to 27. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried for four days before. Bethany was less than three kilometers from Jerusalem, and many Judeans had come to see Martha and Mary comfort them over their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Jesus said, Mary, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will forgive. God will give you whatever you ask for him. Your brother will rise to life, Jesus told her. I know, she replied, that he will rise to life on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. And all those who believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she answered. I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who was comes into this world. Um, so we have in the choir for the second hymn. Thank you. Shall we all rise and take immortal, invincible God, only wise? Immortal, in 
Thank you very much, choir. You can have your seat. I will call on uh, another friend and brother, uh, Shadrach, to help us with the second Bible reading. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Our second Bible reading will be taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 15, verse 50 to 57. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a, in a flesh, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last, temp at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be risen, imperishable, and we will be changed. For the imperishable must be clothed itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that we re written will true death has been swollen with the victory. Where O oh, where O oh, death is your victory? Where O oh, death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Can we be upstanding as we take our next hymn? I need the every hour. Amen. Savior, I 
verse 3. I need thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide. All life is vain. Please have your seat. Our dear brother, who recently went to meet with the Lord, only had one heart. But in that single heart, there are many rooms. And that is why all of us are here today. In a moment, we will be watching a video, um, a kind of tribute to his life. I will plead with every one of us to remain as quiet as possible because the audio may not be as loud. And afterwards, we will call on friends and family to come and tell us what they know about him, the testimony they have about James. Thank you very much. First time you met James? February 2018. Yeah. Uh, what was something that you can learn from him? I had to be fun and serious at the same time. He showed me how to balance those two. Was I, was I learned a lot from James. Yep. So, what was the first time you met James? 2018. Okay. Tell me something that James taught you. To be nice. What was your favorite memory of James? Him teaching me how to be from food. Something that James taught you. Positive vibes. James, our big brother and our best friend. We had so much fond memories with you. You babysat us when we were little. Your house was like a second house to us. Thank you, James, for being so much fun. I liked the way that I could foresee you and it would be a challenge in soccer. Um, thank, thank you for being so kind. Uh, I didn't. I didn't just see James. I didn't just see James as a babysitter, uh, because he was. He wasn't just a babysitter. He was. Uh, he was genuinely someone I saw as a brother. 
Oh, what I knew about James. Um, well, first off, James was a very energetic person. James was a very humble and caring man. He taught me how to respect people. Yeah. Like, he taught me how to have fun, you know. Sometimes we just come over and we'll play FIFA or we'll play on his PS3, PS4. I remember one time he, I remember one time we were here for summer, and he not taught me how to read and write, and not helped me read and write. So overall, I would say he taught me how, how to be kind and how to love others. So, yeah. We would play fight, and you threw me in the air. We would joke with you, and you allowed me to do your hair, a funny hairstyle. You let us watch whatever you wanted to watch on your TV at your house. Um, he was very <laughs> lively, and um, I feel like I learned to, from James just to take life as it is. You know, nothing is ever, it's never that deep, I guess. And um, just enjoy every moment of every day. Uh, I remember I'd come over when we were still young and he'd make us noodles or like these spicy kind of noodles that we liked and we'd go and play FIFA or, or um, something on the GameCube. Um, he was a happy guy. He took things easy. He knew how to relax. He, even though things were serious, he knew when to lay back and just enjoy the good times. Um, I saw him as an authority figure. He was he was not just a babysitter. And I loved him like I love my brothers. I'll say when you taught me how to ride a bike. Cause we used to have our bikes over here. So then yeah. Probably how he taught me how to ride a bike. We came to your house, we'd always watch movies, TV, and play on the Xbox. We'd always have many sleepovers and eat lots of noodles. Whenever we did not want to play a game, we would always jump on you, forcing you to play it. We would always play downstairs. Uh, we would, we we loved James. Every time we were told we were going to James's house, whether it was after school or uh, just just to visit, uh, we would always uh, we would be excited. Uh, um. <laughs> um. There was a day when we were younger. He used to babysit us, and um. And there was a day that we all went to the park, and then like he was teaching my siblings how to ride a bike, and I was like, I can't do it. I, I can't ride a bike, so I never learned how to ride a bike. But um, he taught my siblings how to ride a bike, <laughs> and yeah, um, it just shows how much of a caring person he was. Um, always funny, and yeah. I remember when we all went to bath together, and we went to the top of the gondola. I was scared, but then James was like. Hey, hold my hand, just hold my hand, and I was able to get through it. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, I learned from James to always enjoy the good times and uh, have fun with people around you. Uh, I remember I'd come over sometimes, and then I'd be sitting down there just like, you know, I want to play some FIFA with me. We go and play, and I knew he was letting me win, but, but it, was, it was nice. You know. This is just a lesson to us that life is a gift, and it can be taken away in an instant. That we should thank God for our lives every day, because you never know when it can be taken away. And James' death is a pure example. May your soul rest in peace. Rest in peace, James. Uh, <coughs> we're all going to miss you. We love them with all our hearts, and I pray that his soul may rest in peace.
to miss you so much. We are all so sad that you left so soon. We will miss you. We will miss you so much, James. And we love you. I can remember the echo in my family, the kids testifying about what they knew about him, that he was a gentleman. And I will always remember that smile. James was a happy man. And I'm sure in the presence of the Lord today, he is happier. So friends, do not be sad. He is with the Lord. I want to call on uh, our friend Godwin to come and give a short tribal to about James. Godwin? Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for coming. I just have a short verse from the Bible. Romans 3. I know actually, Romans 5. Verse 3, not only that we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is the verse that came on my phone the morning of. I don't know what else to say. Y'all are here because you know that he's a great man. Y'all know what he meant every one of us in this family. A pillar falls, but another one will rise. Thank you very much. I would like to invite um, two or three persons um, who knew James. And uh, I know we will, there will be many people who want to testify about his life. But well, please bear with us. We may not have so much time today to handle that. Um, I would like to call someone from the family to come and testify about our friend. Tell the world what you know about him. Do I have a volunteer? Okay, I will also like someone from James School or workplace to come and say something about this great man. Thank you very much, sir. Not really good of a talker, but... My name is Asha, me and James worked together at Bass Pro, and before that, we did a lot of things together. I just want to let James' family know that he was the most amazing kid. If it wasn't for James, half of us here wouldn't be pushing to where we need to be. He was the most godly kid on the planet that I ever knew. He prayed every day for not just himself, but for each and one of us. And I hope we continue praying for him every day. God bless you all. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good evening, everyone. James was my... Uh, He was my best friend. He was my brother. <laughs> I've never met anyone that 
That was so kind. So, so courageous. So selfless. He taught me how to love. <laughs> um, it's my greatest honor to know James. Um, my condolences to his family. May he so rest in perfect peace. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I just don't know what to say. I just want to tell James's parents that they are the greatest. I got to know this boy seven years ago. The moment this boy came into the life of my son, I told him, hold on to this boy. He's a great one. He's a good boy. And indeed, my son listened and held on to this boy. And he did turn out to be a great boy. Nigeria community and Calgary have indeed lost a huge blessing. I just, I cannot stop crying for this boy. He's like a member of my family. Every time, Sometimes I go to grocery and come back. James, with my children, would just come to the car and bring the grocery into the house. The very last unforgettable was the last December. We were just preparing for Christmas. I made a Nigerian soup, a goosey soup with spinach. And it's like six of the boys gathered. Immediately this boy comes. He's just the, he's the man of the people. His peers presses him so high. And immediately he lands in Calgary, James will be the first one to come to the house. And I don't even know if James turned out to be my son's friend or my own friend. Because this time I see this boy around, I feel so happy. Even the very soup I'm talking about, I give him a generous share as a special friend. Since this year, I have not set my eyes on this angel. And he came back from Nigeria last week. And on Monday, I was going to work, and the traffic was so terrible. I was late at work. I didn't know it was my son going. It was just the day before yesterday that I got to know that it was because of my son, James, that that traffic was so thick. No, there was no movement. And I was crying and crying day and night and asking God to change. Change, do something like you did with Lazarus. But I know we all love James so deeply and dearly. But I know the good Lord loves him the best. This is an angel. This is a big loss, a huge one. A blessing to the community. He is a friend indeed and a friend in need. He is one of the rare gems I've ever come across. I was so blessed to get to know this young lad. James, this is Henry's mom talking. I wish I could at least set my eyes this very year, 2020. But I know we we'll all love you. But the good Lord loves you the most. So, James's sisters and brother and beloved mom and dad, take heart with me. I'm finding it hard to take heart, but it has happened. This is the reality we are facing. And so, may his blessed soul rest in the bosom of the Lord. Till we meet to part no more in heaven. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, do we have one more person to testify? You're welcome, sir. My name is Shea Wogunshola, the current president of Nigerian Canadian Association of Calgary. You saw the video there where James was dancing. 
That was actually Gala 2018. I was with the parents last night, and I whispered to the dad, are you aware that your son was among the many kids that made people very happy at the gala? He said, no, I was not aware of that. I said, well, your son did a lot that you were not aware of, and you need to be proud. Last year at gala, James was not dancing, <clears throat> but he was part of the floor troupe that held the logistics together. It was a silent hero. We called as a community. James answered. And my wife and I dropped everything tonight to be here because James called and we needed to answer. James, we're proud of you. We thank you. The community in Calgary thank you. It's not about how long you live, but certainly you've impacted many lives. And I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will rest with the family. The turbulence that is within, I pray that God will rain his peace upon you. I landed, I was out of the country, I landed on Wednesday. Somebody tested me right away that a Nigerian passed. And I said, a Nigerian again? They said, yes. I said, who? And they told me the name. I said, is it the same person I know? Say yes, same person you know. We've known the parents for a very, very long time. And the question I say was why? Because I know that on that same road, that same day, over a thousand vehicles must have passed that road. He was supposed to resume work at eight o'clock. He left home very early. Why? There are so many whys, but there's something we know that God is infinite, and that he will give us peace. In our community, he will give us peace. And more importantly, the family will give us peace. And when your heart is overwhelmed, he will leave you to that rock that is stronger and mighty than you will ever be. In the silence of night, when that darkness come upon you, God's peace will rise up and will be and will hold your hands all through the night in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I will call on our sister, uh, Sandra, to testify in a few words. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Well, um, I had to write something down because um, I haven't really been handling things very well, so um, please bear with me. I'll try to be as quick as possible. This is um, for my James. Today, I want to tell you about my James, our James, and your James, really. You see, James was so many things. He was kind, sweet, humble, a free spirit. He was obedient, full of energy. He was an extraordinarily, he was an extraordinary lover of children, as you can see from the video. Actually, um, I'll pause the videos. Um, a lot of the kids on that video, they were so little when James um, was babysitting. I, I don't know what got into us. We decided to run a, a mini daycare at home. And um, I guess you can say it was successful because we actually had kids. And I didn't know what I had gotten myself into, but thank God for my siblings and thank God for James. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know that, um, I didn't think that kids will even remember. It was, it was a while ago. If you knew James and with children, he, he didn't, this man they're talking about is a 20, 24 year old man. Um, he would lower himself to, to the kids level. He didn't care. He would roll in the dirt, roll in the ground. <sighs> Mm. 
<clears throat> he was also really goofy. <laughs> um, he loved the idea of fashion, but hated the work that you, he had to put in just to look good. Um, I knew he loved fashion because um, when I was trying to help him look for a part-time job, he specifically said he wanted to work in fashion. I was shocked. And uh, I was actually hysterical too. And I said, well, what do you know about fashion? And um, he, <laughs> he actually knew nothing about fashion. So well, you know, we still sent out resumes anyway for to fashion departments um, in various stores. He didn't, he didn't get any job in fashion. Um, however, every single business that, um, that had a restaurant or a kitchen, they were all interested in James. Um, James had a special thing for cooking. He had always been interested in, in the kitchen. Um, right from his teenage years, he, he, I mean, he started out at Subway, um, I can't even begin to name all the restaurants and places. It was nice for us because he would bring um, he would bring uh, remnants, kitchen leftovers, <laughs> home for us. So um, so that worked for us. Uh, he had taken some cooking classes in high school. Um, as it turns out, you know. Since most fashions were not, uh, since fashion industries were not, uh, the fashion industry was not, was not interested in him. And if you knew James, you really, you can understand why. Um, <laughs> but he didn't care. And you know, I actually worried about his fashion sense. Uh, I don't even know if you can call it fashion. I, I worried that, like, when you go to work, like, how are these people? But it's so amazing that, I don't know, there's just something about his personality. He was charming. They just like kept him, it, it, they just kept him, you know? <laughs> so when he lived with me, um, we started um, working on a hair regime. He wouldn't cut his hair, so I said, well, then you gotta maintain your hair. And so I had to come up with simple, with a simple recipe for him or simple steps to follow. You know, first, you put the water. Your second, you have to do leave-in conditioner and then coconut oil and then you have to comb the hair, just four steps. He followed it, he followed it judiciously. He was so, uh, I mean, when I came to the house, I uh, flew in on Wednesday, I saw that he had a big bottle of conditioner and water that he had mixed in a Pepsi bottle. I guess he decided to condense four steps in one. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was James. Um, well, I guess we can all agree that James loved children so much um, we don't know where he got it from or why he was given the gift to connect with little children so much. He loved to play. Um, one of his favorite things to do was skateboard and to ride his bicycle. Apart from his... He loved movies. He loved movies. Um, he loved KFC and the Yangtze um, chicken buffet on Deerfoot. Um, he loved it so much. Uh, there was a day we went, James ate so much, he had to go throw up, download <laughs> the other way, and come back for more. I'm sorry if that was too much information, but um, another time they were traveling out for Joshua's, one of Joshua's games in Cal Spell Montana, and I was told that James ate so much they had to pull over on the highway so he could just throw up a little bit. So that was James. He he loved to eat. He loved to eat. And so if you had even if you've come by the house, you would see that there's been lots of food. People are shocked, like, why are you having so much? Well, it's because if James, I'm sure if his spirit was even there looking, it'd be like, I really want some of that. And that's just that's just the truth about James. So um, everything I've said so far are things that everyone know about James. But if I can, I'd like to speak to you today about the James that was not so visible. <sighs> one day, 
we heard that James had been in a car accident. This is not, not this car accident. This was a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, maybe. Um, and unfortunately, he had uh, damaged someone's property offense. And um, of course, he faced severe consequences because he actually had no business driving. Um, at the time, he hadn't even obtained his driver's license. So, you know, he faced the consequences that he was supposed to face. It wasn't until a few months later that one of his friends came and told my sister and said, actually, that accident, <laughs> James did not cause that accident. Apparently, there were a few of them in the car and he wasn't even the one driving. And um, when he realized that um, these friends that he was with, they had more to lose with the authorities, he let them, he asked them to leave, leave the scene because he had nothing on him and he would, it wouldn't, he would take the fall for them. So this James, <laughs> we didn't even know. I mean, he knew he was going to get in so much trouble. He knew he was going to be held responsible for that fence. He knew he was going to get a fine. But to save to save others the trouble, he took that on. Um, it was the day I was visiting the house and I went into his room and I'm not even sure what I was doing in his room and I saw a placard from his school and, it had, and on it it said, it was just a frame and it said uh, Sundance College Best Student of the Month. And this was uh, in 2018. And I said, this was, so I found it in 2019, but it had been issued to him in 2018. And I said to him, well, why is it in your room? Like, why didn't you bring it out? And he's like, I don't know. Like, he just, he's not a glory seeking type. He's just, he doesn't even realize that he, he is amazing, you know? That was James, for the accident story, that was James just allowing himself to get in trouble for others so that they would be okay. And this was him every time. Um, I'll tell you, he was also a student at the Sundance College where he studied systems network administration. Um, he had plans to obtain his degree at um, the University of Malta where he had been admitted in the same program, but he was going to um, obtain his degree there and he, that's one of the things he was going to um, activate this year I guess he was going to travel down to Malta do a one-year program that would um, give him his university degree um, well James like every other person was not perfect he had his struggles but he never lied or pretended about them and to me, that's an example because he was truly strong, you know, um, he was truly strong. One of my fondest memories of James is him putting my, my kids to sleep. He came and lived with me out in the mountains for some time. And my daughter actually preferred him to put, put her to sleep compared to myself or her dad <laughs> because well, James had all the time to read her books. She would want to read more than two books before bed. And James, bless his heart, he would stay there and read and read and read until she fell asleep. Even though we, we never do that. <laughs> like We read one book and say goodnight and she falls asleep herself. Um, for my son, Whenever James woke up, I mean, whenever he woke up um, and James was trying to put him back to sleep, you know how you put an infant in his crib and then you leave, they start crying and then you have to come up with all these tricks to put your, maybe put your hand for some time before you leave. James will, he would stay there. Sometimes I look at him through the monitor, the camera in the room and say, I will laugh like he would fall asleep just so my son would not wake up. He will have, leave his hand there to make sure my son doesn't wake up. And it, it was a funny image. Sometimes I took snapshots even and I said, I will tell him, James, you don't have to, you, you don't have to wait with him. You don't have to wait with him till he falls asleep. Like he will eventually fall asleep. And, but um, anyways, that's just, just one of my fondest memories of him. 
Um, he also completed his internship at the Calgary Drop-In Center. This was in IT and uh, network administration. He did really well. And after he was done, he, he felt like he wanted to continue volunteering there. Um, one thing I realized with James, um, he had a heart for the homeless. I'm not sure how many of you really knew that, but I was telling my mom that um, <laughs> I felt I felt a strong. Um, I felt that God told me that James had a. He was always drawn to the homeless. He would even if you follow him on his social media, he was always saying one thing or the other, appreciating the drop-in center, um, talking about the homeless and whatnot. Um, he had a heart for for the homeless. So he was lucky. He was so happy when he got accepted to do his internship at the drop-in center, and he continued to volunteer there. Um, he was funny. He loved to be fit. He exercised a lot. Um, his, one of his last stories on Instagram was displaying his six pack. Um, I was actually surprised because when James was at my place, um, I was dealing, you know, trying to deal with postpartum fitness and he was just straight up trying to deal with fitness. <laughs> And um, we started together, uh, needless to say, I'm still working on my six pack. <laughs> so when I saw his, um, it, I was a little jealous, you know, because I knew where he started. And um, he really, he was in the best shape of his life. Uh, he loved to skate. He really loved to be free. If he's listening or looking at us right now, I would say, James, truly now you are free no restrictions um, you're free to be anywhere you want you know and I want to encourage everyone it's very hard to have to 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 lose our brother um, it's very hard but I think we didn't even realize how much of an impact he's had on so many other people we loved him as our brother we knew he was great we really loved him, of course. But it's been shocking hearing a lot of the testimonies. And I just want to encourage you guys. We, or I believe that God took him, or God allowed what happened to happen. Some people wonder, well, why was it an accident? Why was it brutal? But you know what? Even if the devil had access to his body, God won the final victory. He got his soul. Because my auntie said to me, they are in a 21, um, my auntie in Nigeria, she said that currently they were um, in a 21 day fast in Nigeria. And um, the, James was one of their prayer points every night. You know, they, they knew he was doing very well. And they just committed him in prayer every night at the end of their fast. So he was being prayed for. Um, I was, there's stories, my, my daughter who, for no reason, decided to pray for her uncle the night before? Or was it me who woke up in the morning and received a word of peace and I com completely did not understand what the word was for until I got that phone call in the office? Um, my dad had prayed for him too the night before. And the fact that he had to leave so early in the morning and this happened, I feel that he didn't even have an opportunity, I hope he didn't even have an opportunity to, I feel he must have been in his purest state. I feel comforted. I want you guys to feel comforted too because even though his body is not here, honestly, I'd rather know that I can see him again in the future. And it's painful, we'll continue to mourn and we will miss him. Someone put it like this, it's like losing an arm and a leg. Life goes on, you'll continue to leave, but you will always be missing something. Um, we'll always miss James, but I'm confident. I'm confident that it was honestly, it was honestly orchestrated. A lot of the events that unraveled afterwards just doesn't seem like a coincidence. It really seemed like it was planned. And so I find comfort in that, and I really want you to find comfort in that because we'll miss him. <laughs> We'll miss him, but we'll see him again. We'll see him again. 
And so, James, if you're listening, I want you to continue to be free. And, um, well, we love you. We love you always. Thank you. What more can we say? I'm human, and I believe every one of us here is. Today, we will mourn James. Tomorrow, we will. But we will continue to thank God for those 24 years and more that James has lived afterwards. And I know much more than that in heaven, there will be and there is a loud outcry of rejoicing because another Godson is at home. I will welcome our dear pastor now, Pastor Dapo, to come and encourage us in the word of God. You're welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you once again for making time this evening to honor our beloved brother, James Ocholi. Just as everyone before me had said, it's, uh, it's hard. <coughs> Excuse me. It's hard not to mourn or to feel the pain of losing our beloved brother. But we take comfort in the word of God. So before I go tonight, I want to read to us, uh, please, if you have your phones, your iPad, can you please open your Bible at the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, and I'm going to read the first seven verses, Isaiah 46, from verses 1 to 7. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into, this, into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the only place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The Eden rich, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. In verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Uh, please permit me to read from what I've put down. I don't trust myself uh, to be that very composed. I hope uh, you, you bear with me tonight. Well, we all heard what everyone had to say. We listened to the tribute. And one common thread that was that ran through all we heard was that James was a loving person. He had a clean heart. James had a clean heart. So losing a loved one at the prime of life and with the world before him, to say the least, is quite devastating. And James was full of life. Our brother James just completed his IT program <clears throat> last December. And he and the family were full of great hopes and expectations for the future. Then, on the morning of Tuesday, we lost James in a ghastly car crash. We can never quite imagine, <clears throat> nor put into words, the pain and anguish family, friends, and loved ones are passing through at this moment. It is not, therefore, out of place to ask the question, why? Why could such a loving God allow such a tragedy to befall us? 
Why didn't God do something? The questions are endless. And there seems to be no answer that is adequate. So tonight, I'm not here to provide any answer or to tell you why. Because God only knows what we do not know. Bible says his thoughts are ways and ways are far above and beyond us. So I'm here tonight to remind us of God's promises to us at this critical time so that we may be comforted, reassured, and so that our shattered psyche could be revived through the words of the scriptures. The hymn that we sang, Immortal, Invisible. One of the stanzas there says, To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but nothing changes thee. Yes, God is the giver of life, Bible says in the book of Genesis, it says God made man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So as we are sitting here today, what makes us who we are is actually that breath of God that is on the inside of us. The moment the breath goes out, then no man, then there's no man left. So on the morning of Tuesday, our brother James breathed his last and he went to be with his maker. In our Bible reading, Isaiah 46 that we read, we are told that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I want us to pay attention to those three words. Refuge, strength, and help. A refuge is a shelter, it's a hiding place, a place of comfort. Oh, we all need a place to escape from the pain and agony of this loss. We all need a place, a cocoon to put ourselves in, so that we can hide ourselves from the palpitations of our heart, from the deep sorrow, the cloud of sorrow hanging over our heads. We need a refuge. We need strength. Because right now, our strength failed us. This loss has knocked the winds out of our sails. Even the strongest, the strongest person is crushed and torn apart. We need help at this time to bear this loss. We need a power greater than us to take us beyond this pain and this feeling of hopelessness. However, the Bible says all these requirements are found in God. He alone has all that it takes to come out of this situation stronger and with our faith renewed. When we lean on him, then we shall not be moved, my people. When we lean on God, when we lean on his promises, we shall not be moved. Then, it's only then we begin to understand and see the purpose in this unfortunate situation. Then, only then, we will see that this is just the troubling of the waters and the shaking of the mountains of our lives. And because God is with us, we shall not be moved. And the most comforting part of it is that God is right with us, even in this pain. He is our Emmanuel, God with us. Glory to his holy name. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, the Bible says, there's a time and season to every purpose, a time to be born and a time to die. We, like merchandise on the store shelf, we have manufacturing date and we have expiry date. And they are not the same for all of us. family and friends, our brother James has come. 
he has served his time. And the time had come for him to depart this world. James has finished his battles and is at peace. He had passed the baton to us, still living. And we have the responsibility to live our lives so that when the time comes to leave, we will have no regrets. As we remember James, as we gather tonight to remember James, it's also a time of sober reflection for all of us. Nothing reminds us of the futility of life than moment like this. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations. We have things, a million things we want to do. But one moment changes everything. And then we realize that all these things, they don't, they don't matter. They are not important after all. Only one thing, and one thing alone is important. No matter what we want to be in life, one day the end will surely come. The Bible charges us to set our affections on things above. We are more than rust. Rust does not corrupt. James was full of life. James loved children. He loved his family. He loved his friends. James was selfless. We heard how James took his friend's trouble upon himself. This epitomizes the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. That upon these two commandments hinges the law and the prophets. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. We have tonight as we gather I want us to pay attention to these things that we have learned from the life of James. Even though we gather to bid farewell to him tonight, we do not mourn him as people without hope, but we bid farewell to James with the understanding that we will see him again. So I want to close tonight by leaving you with a question. How are you planning for your life after this life? Jesus Christ said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So we know that when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though we die, yet we shall live. And even for those of us that are still living, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will not die. And when, we, when I talk about death, I'm not talking about physical death. Because the Bible makes us to realize that it's one death that is the most important. This, con this, more, this, this uh, earthly container that we are all looking at will be destroyed that the soul of man, the destination is one that is most important. So I charge us tonight as we gather in this solemn assembly to remember our brother James. I want to charge us also with the word of Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, For God has not sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He says, He that believeth in him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So I charge you tonight, what verdict, what verdict are you looking forward to? You can, there's still time, Bible says to them that are joined to the living, there is hope. So as we gather here tonight, let us use this occasion 
to ponder and to think over that important question that where do you want to spend your life after this life? Do you believe in Jesus? If the answer is no, then let, it, let this be an occasion of this service of songs for Brother James. That this will be an occasion for you where you make the most important decision of your lifetime. I'm sure James will want you to do that. God bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the life of our brother James Ucholi. Thank you for the blessings and joy of knowing him. Heavenly Father, you are a refuge, our strength, and our ever-present help in time of need. Lord, we call upon you for help, for family, friends, and loved ones of brother James. That you, O oh God, will strengthen and comfort and encourage them at this time. Help us, O oh Lord, to draw comfort and courage from your abiding presence. For you have promised us that you will not leave us, neither will you forsake us. Father, I ask tonight that for everyone here tonight, feeling the pain and anguish of this great loss, I ask, Lord, that you hold us close to you, O oh God. Draw us, O oh Lord, in your warm embrace. And let your word of comfort, O oh God, come to us at this point. We bless you, Heavenly Father, because you're faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. There is another song from the choir. I pray that as we listen, the Lord will bless every heart here tonight. In Jesus' name. Pardon me, I was corrected, not from the choir, but from every one of us. Thank you so much. Please, can we be on our feet as we take Abide With Me?
last verse. have your seat. Um, I will want to um, give one or two announcements uh, before we give the vote of, of thanks. Uh, the funeral service for our dear brother, uh, James, will be taking place at this same venue tomorrow. Uh, from three o'clock, we'll be having the view opportunity um, to see, to pay the last respect to him, and the funeral service will start at 4 p.m., uh, please um, do your best to be here. I want us to look around very well. Try and do this for me. Look around. Try and look at the face of everyone around you as much as people, as many people as you can see. There's a reason for that. Please look around. Try and capture as many faces as you can capture tonight. You ask me why. Okay. Anybody that you've seen tonight, especially people you are not quite familiar with, anytime you see them anywhere, tell them, I know you. And if they ask you where at the celebration of James, please cry no more. And when you see that brother or sister, Tell them that the day we celebrated James, you are there. And even if it's 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, if you can still remember that person, rejoice. And I want that rejoicing to start from now. Because wherever James is, he is not weeping. He is at his best. Praise the Lord. So I will call on uh, Miss Ehi Ocholi for the vote of thanks. Hi. Um, thank you guys for all coming. Um, sorry, I'm not really good at giving speeches, um, but I'm actually really surprised with the amount of um, turn up that we had today. I was expecting a lot of people to come, but <laughs> there is a lot of people here, so thank you all. Um, I know that a lot of people have traveled from far places as well to be here with us. Um, we've also had a lot of support. Um, we have people coming to the house, they're cooking, they're cleaning. We have a food police, thank you, Jennifer. Um, we, um, we, it's, it, it has been a difficult time and, um, thank you all for sharing, um, not just here tonight, I'm also at the house. Um, I've heard a lot of things that I did not know about James, um, not just me, even other people as well. So, um, it's actually helped us a lot through this, um, awful time. 
Um, James was not perfect. Um, just like Xandra said, um, nobody is perfect. We are humans. But James was full of love. He was very loyal. He was also very respectful to his um, elders and his peers. It's um, really beautiful and moving to look around and see all of you being here because you are proof that James lived a full and wonderful life in his short time on earth. And he... Sorry. Uh, and he impacted um, a lot of people in a positive way. And he's still doing it even after he has died. James would God, he would have been so touched that all of you remember. Yeah, he would have been touched that um, all the things that people remember. Um, some of the kids that made those videos, they were so young when um, James was babysitting them. I know he still saw them and he still played around with them, but some of the memories that they have, they were from a long time ago, and I actually had forgotten some of them. So thank you guys for reminding us about it. And one more thing, it does give me great comfort to know that after that comes internal life where there is no tears and suffering. So we know James is in a good place. So thank you guys for your prayers and your encouragement. Your enduring love and support means a lot to us. Thank you. We will not stop giving thanks to God for those 24 years and for so many other years of rejoicing that will follow from the memory of our brother, James. And at this moment, I'm going to call on Pastor Andrew Oribabo for the closing prayer. Praise the Lord. I will not disobey the Holy Spirit. As pastor was preaching something, the Spirit dropped in my heart. Um, the Bible in God's wisdom says it's better to be in the house of mourning than in the house of celebration. And there is a reason for that. Something good is going to happen here tonight. Because the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven for one soul that is saved. Praise God. There are many here who, though they are living, but they are dead. If you are living, but you have not accepted Christ, you are a living dead. And as pastor was preaching, the Bible dropped in my heart that there are a few people here who want to use this occasion as we honor our brother James, to be born into life in this world. Please, shall we bow our heads as we pray? I'm not going to take your time. Just raise your right hand up. James passed on. The blood called him. Thank you for that hand. You are not raising thank you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for that hand. It could be anybody's turn. You are not even sure of seeing the next dawn. If the Lord comes, like Pastor asked, where will you spend eternity? It's James. We are celebrating his life. So much has been said about him. Good things. I'm glad that our sister Zandra said it three times that she's comforted by the happenings, by the circumstances around his transition, around his call up. What about you? Please, those hands up should just remain up and you say the following. Just, could you just rise where you are, please? Let's so that we see. Could you rise? Those whose hands are up, just stand up. Stand up, stand up. Praise God. Please, you say after me, those who are standing. If you are here, you just want to join them. 
please do. They are standing up to God, not to man. They are standing up because their names today will be written in the book of life. They are standing up because because of them, they will be rejoicing in heaven tonight, right now. The angels will be blasting the trumpet. They will be rejoicing before God Almighty. But if you don't have life, you are like a living dead. You are dead though you are alive. That's just the truth. That's what scripture says. Please, for those who are standing, say after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for my brother, James, for whom we have gathered to celebrate his life. Lord Jesus, you chose this occasion to call me unto thyself. I have come. Please accept me, Lord Jesus. And from tonight, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Please let my name be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That when the saints go marching in, I shall be among the number. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these who are standing tonight. They are standing up to thee, Lord. I join them in faith. Father, that by their confession, so shall it be unto them. That they be rejoicing in heaven. That the angels blasting the trumpets, so Lord, as we join them in rejoicing, Lord, that they have passed on from life unto, from death unto life tonight. And therefore, Lord, with boldness, they can say, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For death will no longer have hold over them in the name of Jesus. I declare upon their lives, Lord, that whatever hold, whatever plan, whatever arrangement the kingdom of darkness have had over their lives before tonight, Father, they are all pulled down in Jesus' name that from tonight they will walk in victory they will walk in boldness and they will walk among the saints Lord Jesus your word says all that come to you are able to keep them and deliver them on that day to the Father on that day when you deliver us all let these ones be there in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Spirit Father we thank you for tonight for the Ucholi family we thank you for our brother James we thank you Lord for indeed as has been mentioned here, it's not the length of time one lives in this world, but how effective one has been, how much impact one has made to glorify you and to impart the souls of others. And our brother James has done that effectively. We say thank you. We say thank you. Lord, yet we are, in the, we are mournful because we believe that he's been called up too soon. And so, Father, we join with our brethren, the Ocholi family, to say, Holy Spirit, you are our comforter. Comfort them in times like this. Send them the word of comfort. For words of man cannot comfort them. But when you, Holy Ghost, comfort them, then that comfort will be true indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh Lord, that you undertake for the family. And we pray, the Bible says, that, that affliction shall not arise a second time. That indeed in this family, Father, they will never suffer such affliction again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, I say enough is enough for the church. Particularly the Nigerian community in Calgary. That, Father, we will not suffer such affliction any longer. Such reproach shall not hang. Every family represented here tonight. On whom any reproach of death is hanging. We declare as a church, we say that reproach be rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Receive all the glory. We pray for our brother Adapo. We pray for his ministry, for his wife and his children. Lord, he shall run the race. He shall accomplish, he shall complete his course to the glory and praise of your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. For those who are standing, please, could you, after you finish, meet with Pastor Dapo, and um, he will have something for you. Shall we all share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Please greet somebody as you go out. God bless you. Sure.